Hello YouTube, welcome to a Gibbs phase rule tutorial video. Uh, if you haven't seen the phase diagram tutorial video, I'd recommend checking that out. The link will be in the comments below. If you already know how phase diagrams work, then you should have a good understanding of how this works. So let's just jump right in. The Gibbs phase rule tells us the number of intensive variables that must be defined to, de to determine the state of a system. So what does that mean? Well, let's let's define some terminology here first before we go any further. So variables can come in two forms. They can be extensive or intensive. Now, a variable is just a property of a system. So if I have a glass of water, um, I can know its volume. I can know its mass. I can know the number of moles in that water. These are all extensive variables. They depend on the quantity of that system. So Volume is a quantity, mass is a quantity, number of moles is a quantity, right? Intensive variables are not dependent on the quantity of that system. So things like temperature and pressure and density, okay? doesn't matter how much of the stuff I have, it's temperature, pressure, and density is not dependent on how much, okay? So that's an intensive variable. And the important thing here so the Gibbs phase rule only works for intensive variables, all right? So the next thing we should look at is what is a state? Well, a state is knowing all the variables of a system. So I know its volume, its mass, the number of moles, the temperature, the pressure, the density, etc., okay? So that's the state, the phase, the number of phases. So that's what the state is defined as, okay? Okay, so now let's look at the equation for Gibbs phase rule. This is the equation here. It's F equals C minus P plus 2. What does that mean? So F is what we are trying to find. F is the number of intensive variables we need to determine or define before we can find the state of the system. So again, intensive variables are things like temperature and pressure, okay? Things that don't depend on the quantity of the substance. C is the number of components in that system or substance. So if I had just water in a jar, that would be one component. If I had water and salt in a jar, that would be two components. If I had water, salt, and maybe oil in a jar, that would be three components, okay? So it's the number of components in that system. P is the number of phases. So if I had just ice, that would be one phase. If I had ice and water, that would be two phases. If I had ice, water, and steam together, that would be three phases, okay? Two is just a constant, right? It's just a constant in that equation. Okay, so let's work through an example. This will be set up kind of like the phase diagram video, if you've watched that. Um, but basically, we're just going to conduct a mock experiment, okay? We're going to say we have a chunk of ice in a pan, and we're going to heat it over a stove. And we're going to look at what happens when that thing melts and eventually boils, okay? And we're going to work through this example using the Gibbs phase rule and show you um, how the Gibbs phase rule applies to phase changes and defining the state of a system, all right? So let's start with our Gibbs phase rule. F equals C minus P plus 2. Remember, F is the number of variables that we need to define. C is the number of components. P is the number of phases and 2 is our constant. So F with the number of intensive variables we must define equals the number of components, which in this case is just one, right? We just have water. We have solid water right now. We don't have water and salt or water and oil or water or anything else. It's just one component, H2O. H2O. So one component minus the number of phases. How many phases do we have? Just one, right? Just ice here. So one phase plus our constant two. So F equals one minus one is zero plus two. F will equal two. Or said another way, we need to define two variables to figure out the state of the system. So two intensive variables, and we should also make a note that these can be independent of each other. Okay, so we can have two independent variables. And what I mean by that is we could have uh, we could have one atmosphere here, and we'll say that's 1.5 atmospheres. And we could have temperature of negative 5 degrees Celsius there. And as long as we're still in this ice field, we're good, right? These variables are not dependent on each other, as long as we're still in the ice, 
as long as we have one phase, we can have two independent variables. We could have 0 0.5 atmospheres and negative 30 degrees Celsius. And boom, we're still, we're still good. We're still within the ice field, right? So these variables can be independent of each other. All right, so two variables we must define. Two independent intensive variables, such as temperature and pressure. Let's say we melt this ice at one atmosphere. All right, we're going to do it in our house, and we know the pressure in my house is at one atmosphere. Okay? And it's not going to change, right? We're going to heat this ice, but the pressure will stay constant. We'll add heat, so we'll change the temperature, but the pressure will stay one pressure. Okay, so that's one intensive variable, right? That's pressure. Now, our other variable, intensive variable, is independent of this pressure as long as we stay within one phase. So we could have a temperature of negative 10 degrees. We could have a temperature of negative 30. This variable is independent of this as long as we have one phase, okay? So let's say we measure the ice, the, the, we measure the temperature of the ice and it's negative 10 degrees Celsius, all right? So that puts us right there. And as long, again, as long as we only have one phase, these can be independent of each other, all right? All right, so what happens as we heat up this ice? What's going to happen? We're going to melt the ice, right? We're going to have ice and water coexisting. We're going to have water and ice in this pot. So if we look at our graph, where does that put us? Well, remember, if we look at our phase diagrams, we have these two phase lines, right? And everything on this line represents two phases existing together. So, because we're at one atmosphere, we know we're going to end up right there, right? Because this, this pressure stays constant throughout our experiment. So we know on our phase diagram that we must wind up right there, okay? Because we have two phases existing together. So what does this look like with our, our phase rule? Okay, so F will equal 1, and remember, we only have one component in here. Now, we may have two phases right now, but still, we only have water, so we have one component. So C is 1, now we have two phases, water and ice, so P equals 2, plus 2, our constant. Do the math, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, plus 2, F equals one or one variable or we only need to define one variable to figure out the state of the system and guess what we already know that variable right we know our pressure is one atmosphere so we know our one variable pressure one atmosphere now we know its temperature right we just have to look at this diagram and say okay that's where it intersects that's where the temperature is and remember, now we only have one independent variable. Okay, let's, let's look at this another way. Let's say we don't know the pressure in my house. But let's say we measure the temperature of this mixture here. And it is negative 5 degrees Celsius. Well, because we only need to define one variable, one independent intensive variable, if we have two phases existing together, we already know everything else, but just by measuring that temperature. And if we look at our graph, that makes sense, right? We can go up from that negative five, and once we cross that line, that two-phase line right there, we know what pressure we're gonna have. Let's say it's 1.5 atmospheres. Makes sense? In this case, we only needed to, to define one variable, one in intensive independent variable, and we could figure out everything else. And when we look at the graph, that makes sense because Wherever that variable crosses the two-phase line is where you're, you're going to have the other variable, okay? Okay, as we melt the ice, we eventually end up with just water, right? So now we have one phase. So let's do our equation here. F equals C is 1. P is 1 phase plus 2. F equals 1 minus 1 is 0 plus 2, 2. Or two variables we must define. And we remember we're at one atmosphere there, and we know we're somewhere in our liquid phase here. And now we have two independent variables, right? We have one atmosphere, but temperature is independent of that pressure, right? As long as we're in liquid phase, we could have temperatures of 
10 degrees Celsius. We could have temperatures of 80 degrees Celsius. We could have temperatures of 50 degrees Celsius, right? Temperature is now independent of pressure because we only have one phase, all right? When we look at our last example, right, we can also say that if we have water and ice existing together and we have one atmosphere of pressure, there's only one temperature that that can happen at, right? So let's reiterate that point as we, uh, as we continue on in this experiment. So as we've, we've heated our liquid up to the point where it starts boiling, where are we going to be? If we're at one atmosphere, we're going to be right here, right? We're going to be on the two-phase line between a liquid and a gas. So again, let's do our equation. F equals C is 1. P is now 2 again, plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. F will equal 1, or one intensive variable that we must define. And because we're at one atmosphere, we already know the rest of the the uh, the variables, right? We know the state of the system. We know this temperature must be 100 degrees Celsius, right? Because we have liquid and gas existing together in the same system, and because we know we're at one atmosphere, there's only one temperature that that can happen at, okay? And our graph shows us that, okay? And if we look at it in a different light, if we measure this boiling water and we determine that it is at 120 degrees Celsius, we know because we have water and gas coexisting that there's only one pressure that that can happen at. Pressure is now dependent on temperature, okay? So let's continue this experiment. You know, as we've boiled or as we've heated up this mixture, this liquid and gas mixture, we end up with just gas now, right? Just steam. So we're within this steam field and we know we're at one atmosphere. Let's go through our example again. F equals one minus one phase plus two. F equals two, right? Two variables we must define. And again, we know we're at one atmosphere, therefore we need to figure out what the temperature is to define the state. And again, that makes sense, right? We're within this large field. We're not on the line anymore. These, these uh, variables can be independent of each other. We could have temperature at 110. We could have it at 190. They're independent of each other now. Or if we look at it another way, if I measure the temperature of the steam, at 110 degrees, there's a limit. There's a limit to the pressure that that can happen at, and that would be right there, right? But I could have pressure at one atmosphere. I could have it at 0 0.5 atmospheres. We have now two variables that we must define, right? And they're independent of each other, okay? Okay, hopefully this is making sense to you. There's one other uh, scenario that we need to look at and if it doesn't make sense by now, this should really drive the point home, I think. So in this scenario, we have ice, water, and steam existing all in the same substance, okay? And where is that on our graph? Well, isn't that at our triple point, right? Where the solid, liquid, and the gas all meet right there, okay? So that's three phases, right? So let's go through our, our phase rule. So F equals C still one, just water. P will now equal three, right? We have water, ice, and steam. So three plus two. And when we do the math, what do we see? One minus three is negative two plus two. F will equal zero. So that means there's zero independent variables that we need to define. And if we look at our graph, that makes sense, right? There's only one pressure and one temperature that this can occur at, that we can have these three phases at. So there's zero variables that we need to find, right? We already know what the pressure and temperature is where this scenario can occur, okay? Therefore, F equals zero, zero variables to find, all right? Anyway, that should wrap up this video on the Gibbs phase rule. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.